Setting up and managing blog and wiki services on OS X Server by 318. To get started, first open Server Admin. From here, click on the Web Service and then click on the Settings icon in the Server Admin toolbar. From the Settings pane, click on Wiki tab and then provide a path to the data store. Next, click on the plus sign and drag in the name of the user who you would like to be able to create Wiki pages. Next, click on the SMTP relay button and the external web services buttons to provide a calendar and an SMTP relay server. Provide the authentication information for your SMTP relay server, including the address, the host name, the port number, the username for that host name, and the password. And then click on the Done button. Now go ahead and click on the Save button or choose a different default theme for users to have for wikis and click Save. Next, click on the Sites button in the toolbar and then double click on the default site or the site that you're going to be using for your wiki and blog services and check the box for wikis. Now click on the Save button and then click on Start Web to go ahead and start the web services. Next, alternatively, you can also add the blog service. To do so, check the box for blogs and click Save again. You'll likely want to go ahead and stop and start the web service once you've done so. Now that you've enabled wiki and blog services, you'll more than likely want to go ahead and open up the web portal to configure them far more granularly. To open the web portal, open Safari and provide the host name in the address bar. Then click on wikis. From here, go ahead and click on Login and provide the short name, not the long name, of the username who you will be authenticating as. Now we're going to create our first wiki page. Once you've authenticated, go ahead and click on Create a new wiki. From here, provide a name for the wiki and then a description, if applicable, and click on the Next button. You'll then be able to go ahead and select a theme for your wiki once you've done so click on the Next button. Next, configure who can read and write to the wiki. Then, click on the Private button if you want it to be private to users of the server and type in short name of the user who you'd like to provide access to, or group, or users. And then click Create to go ahead and create the pages. Next, click on the Go to Wiki button. Now that you've created a wiki-enabled website, you can go ahead and create a wiki page, which you would do so by clicking on the plus sign and providing a title to the page on the pop-up. Then click on Create, and now type your first posting. You can use the toolbar above your posting to configure fonts, colors, and schemes. You can also use the double brackets to go ahead and configure HTML for that page. Once you're done with the posting, click on the Save button. Then go back to the home page for the wiki itself and you'll see your posting in the recent changes. From here, you can copy the address and paste it into the main page if you would like. Now let's look at going ahead and setting up a blog. Go back to the home page of the server and click on blogs. Then click on create new blog or authenticate and click on create new blog. Then click on the plus sign to create a new page and then click on create once you've typed in a name for the page. Now you'll see the same WYSIWYG editor that you saw with the wiki service. When you're done with the page, simply click Save. One of the great new features of the blog and wiki service is actually the updates page. From your home page, click on Blogs, and then click on Updates. From here, you'll see a listing of all the posts, as well as a red or unread status. To mark it as red or unread, simply click on the bullet point. The latest iteration of Snow Leopard Server provides a wealth of new features. Stay tuned to the 318 Tech Journal for more information. Thank you.